if it's possible to be part of this movement, why not? I mean, um, we, we struggle to have access to information. If we have information, why don't we also share it? And therefore, uh, become part of a pool of universities who are prepared to, to exchange information uh, for the purpose of improved learning, I think. Mm, that's, uh, that's how we, that's how, why I thought KUST initially, well, but I got interested in making definitely the, the College of Health Sciences take a serious interest in OER. Mm. I think this heralds um, higher heights that we have to reach in teaching and training. And indeed, the, 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 the sophistication uh, that was portrayed led me to say to myself that this was well nigh impossible in, in our part of the world. However, ten months later, I have a different story to tell that this is very possible. We are using OER because uh, it will make our lives easier in many, many ways. Uh, having my lecture material readily available to students 24 hours a day, seven days a week, means that they can even read it before they come to meet me in the lecture room. And therefore, they will probably pull, ask the right questions if they've, they, they've read it. After the lecture, if there's something they do not understand, I, I expect that they'll be able to refer back to my material and, and go over it again. And we think that learning should be that way. We should be able to rehearse over and over again what we learn. It only adds up to our being perfect in, in what we learn. This would more or less um, bring a revolution to the way we learn because we are so used to you know, directly interacting with our teachers. First of all, it would be convenient to the lecturer because he has to give the same lessons over and over again. So if it's put in the form of an OER, then it can be made accessible to the students. But going through the videos, what I realized was that, I don't know if it's by design, but they've been designed in such a way that they are not replacing the main student-teacher interactions we are supposed to have. They are such that if you're a serious student, you go for lectures, you go for your labs, and you add them, they are the perfect helping aid. But they are also designed such that you can't be lazy and use them to replace the class sessions. It won't work. They are meant to go hand in hand. Uh, you know, certain demonstrations which we have to perform to students uh, often are carried to large groups of students. Let's say we go to the clinic uh, and uh, we have about 20 students hovering over the lecturer trying to get a feel of a lump, trying to learn how to examine a lump properly. Uh, with, through the means of OER, we should be able to, uh, we are able to actually uh, show them a close-up how it's done. They can then go back and practice on their own. It's best experienced at Confalochi, for example, and there are 140 students in my class, and we are divided into teams of 14. So for fourth year, for example, in medicine, we have 14 first year, um, fourth year students. And then the final year is also divided into teams. So for the same, let's say, team A, you have 14 students from fourth year, 14 students from final year who are both doing medicine, junior and senior clerkship. That makes 18 students, um, sorry, 28 students. And we have one consultant, a few residents, house officers. So in a team, we are looking at not less than about 35 people. And in the morning, we are all going for ward rounds. Not to mention the hospital is not that big, so the spaces in between beds are small. So sometimes it gets so ridiculous that there are more doctors than patients in the ward. You have about five patients in the ward and 30 doctors coming for ward rounds. You don't hear much. You don't see much. And then in the theaters, for example, we are having total abdominal hysterectomy, about 14, 20 of us there. Once again, you don't hear much, you don't see much. The lecturers do their best, but they can only shout so much. They can only project so much. There are no microphones. So it's terrible. So in that sense, with the OER video, for example, on um, total abdominal hysterectomy and the caesarean section, 
you watch it you go to the theater even though you're, you're so many there isn't much to hear there isn't much to see but once you've seen it before you know what's going to be done so that if you hear this word and you don't hear the next sentence at least you know what is being done so you appreciate it more so i think it's really going to help so with the oer it gives us you know direct access you're seeing things so clearly as you probably would not see in the theater so that when you see the actual thing it's only going to augment what you've already seen um, on the video yeah um with the oer program um we we, we see that we are going to play a pivotal role in uh, training faculty, um, staff, and students, um, for all those who are engaged in OER. Multimedia management looks like, uh, like at a broad uh, session of issues that affects the manager who works in a multimedia uh, setting. Uh, there's one particular component which deals with copyright issues, and uh, that is where uh, we've also had to make some uh, adjustments, expand it to include the issue of Creative Commons and so on. I think the benefits are mainly in two areas. Uh, the first one is that we open ourselves up to the rest of the world about the content of material that we are putting out there to our students. Uh, and and that the rest of the world can judge whether we are teaching the right thing or the wrong thing. Uh, in other words, we are exposing ourselves to criticism, uh, which I think is positive, even though some people may not always be very comfortable with it. But ultimately, provided we get some positive feedback, then that is likely to be beneficial to us in the long term. Uh, so that is the first point. The second point is that by putting out our material uh, freely available to whoever wants to use it, we are making ourselves very visible. Uh, we are sharing what we have and we are advertising ourselves at the same time. Then I love the self-assessment parts because Sometimes when you're going through it, it's like you're playing, but at the end of the day, there are these questions you have to answer, and it brings you home that maybe you're just watching the videos, you're not getting the actual information. So I believe those three, the clinical videos, the animation, and the self-assessment quiz, very important, yeah. Uh, I think we're in a new realm. Uh, 